Today I'm sharing with you two t-shirts, easy to sew, raglan sleeves, easy to fit. My t-shirts might not be what you are expecting, sneak peek, keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today is all about the raglans. The Future Friday pattern from Love Notions today is the Rockford Raglan. It's a pattern for neat fabrics, obviously, and there are many views as all Love Notions patterns. There's lots of options there that you can mix and match to choose the styles that best suit you or what you like to sew. All these views have in common the raglan sleeves, of course. There are length options there for the length of the sleeves. There's two types of shape of the t-shirt. Views A and B, a sort of swing style. One is a shirt length, one is a tunic, and then view C and D, a more slimmer style, and you can choose an asymmetric version or one that's hemmed with a band. So nice options, they all have a scoop neckline. I have already made one last year and it's the one I'm wearing now. I'll just show you a bit. So this is the one I made last year. It's cotton spandex, but super drapey. It's like a different blend, I think. And I've got it hitting the original length of the pattern there. It's nice and swing style. This is view B, short sleeves. And as you can see, of course, the lace sleeves are the main feature here. This was an inspiration I got from a photo on Pinterest that I just made come true. <laughs> Super cool. I do have a video all about this version from last year already on the channel. This year I wanted to make a few more just in a different way. I like to have fun and experiment, you know me. Anyway, this is, as I mentioned, for neat fabrics. They do need to stretch 40% horizontally at least. They also do need some vertical stretch and it is very recommended in the pattern that this fabric is drapey. ITY, modal, rayon spandex, French terry, any nice neat fabric that flows and drapes really nicely. This one specifically here, I would say is a medium weight. Uh, it looks thick to touch and to work with, but it actually does drape. So it's not sometimes about the thickness of the fabric or the weight of it, but the way it's actually been weaved. It's really not recommended to use cotton lycra because it is not a fabric that drapes. It tends to be really structured. For both of my versions, my fabric choice hasn't been conventional. And I'll just show you a piece of a lace. This is stretch lace. This is a selvage there. And actually this fabric does stretch quite a lot horizontally and vertically. It's not a problem about the stretch. It does stretch and to work with it, I treat it like any other knit. The other fabric I had that I really wanted to have a raglan tee out of is this cotton spandex or cotton lycra. It's got tropical print, lots of nice stretch and recovery. I would say it's a lightweight cotton spandex. I've worked with heavier ones. I know it doesn't really drape, but I always think there's got to be a way around these styles that need drape. You can maybe adapt them a bit to make this work. And I'm obsessed with that print, you know? The sizing for this pattern has already been updated to include up to 5X. So it'll go up to a bust of 57 and a half inches and a hip of 59 and a half inches. And there is a standard and a full bust option with this pattern. It's not a fitted style, so you will find positive ease at the bust around two inches. You will also find some positive ease at the hips around one to three inches, depending on the size for the fitted version. For the swing style, uh, views A and B. I didn't actually measure, but it is a lot more than one or two inches of positive ease. It's quite loose at the hips because it has that style that flares out to the side. So after having made this one last year and having worn it a lot, I always knew that when I made more, I wanted to make changes in the neckline. This is a nice scoop neckline. It's not like touching my clavicles or anything, but I always wish I'd cut it a little lower. So have a look at what I'm going to do to these necklines in this little clip. This is the original neckline there. For my lace version, I've dropped it three quarters of an inch and that's the mark that you see there. And then with a curved ruler, I just drew the line up to there. Now what you see here is a V neckline I will do with another version. And to do this one, from there I just measured two inches down with a curved ruler again just did a slight curve there to match that so it's not a straight line that gives a v-shape that is a little bit prettier than it's if it's just a straight line so those are the necklines I'm going to be using for the two versions I'll show you the lace one first this is the one where I lowered the neckline by three quarters of an inch 
and I really like how it looks. It's completely transparent. That is the neckline. You can see the sleeves there. These scallops there were not originally there. I did need to trim away at the fabric really carefully to get the shape and there are scallops within the big scallops. So I was really careful to do that and that avoids hemming these sleeves. To sew this one, it was exactly like any other knit fabric. I surged my edges together. I also did use a shallow zigzag to sew all the edges with a you know, 3 8 seam allowance. So sewing this was no different to how you would sew a regular knit fabric. During the whole time I was sewing this lace one together, I was thinking, how am I gonna finish this neckline? I didn't have any matching fabric in this color to do a neckband. I was thinking, how can I do binding? And then I saw the scraps on the table. And you can see scraps of selvage. The selvage is really nice. It is a clean finished edge. It is quite narrow. I would say this is about half an inch wide selvage. And I looked at it and I just trimmed some away. And I thought this is perfect to use for a binding. It's gonna be the exact same color because it is the same fabric and it'll work perfectly to bind that neckline. It works because the selvage is stretchy as well and it's not floppy, like it's nice. So I still measured my new circumference because it was lower, calculated 85% of that and cut my binding that length. So this is what I used and because the binding was very narrow, it was only half an inch, which is the width of that selvage. I sewed it onto the neckline on the inside with the serger I matched quarters, did everything the same you would do with a band or a binding, surged it and then flipped it to the outside and then I basted it and then I just top stitched with the shallow zigzag I'd been using everywhere and now the binding looks like that. I think it looks super nice, super clean and I'm very happy that I didn't have to go looking for other bits of fabric, I really didn't have anything else that I could have used, you know? So this was a good solution. If you're using stretch lace at any point, have a look at your selvages and see if they work for you. Not every stretch fabric stretches vertically and horizontally the same. This did work in this case because the fabric was sort of stretching the same both ways and the selvage did stretch in the amount that was appropriate to bring this neckline in. It doesn't gape or anything, it's super nice. This is my lace top, the original length of the pattern. Hits the full hip, I would say, it flares out a little bit. I think if you're working with drapier fabric, it will hang and flow. This one is not that drapey, so that's why it sticks out a little bit, but it's fine. I think this will match a lot of my clothes, and I just pulled out this Cebu Illusion pencil skirt in scuba that has this tone of white there, and a little pink cami underneath. This is completely transparent. Maybe you can see the seams there. For the hem, I didn't fold up, I just surged the edges. If I fold up, it'll be super bulky and it'll affect the way it falls. I think it would stick out even more than it sort of does. So I just left it there and I think it's acceptable. You can see it's nice and flowy, fitted here at the bust and then it just has a lot of space there. This neckline is lower than the original. I dropped it by three quarters of an inch as you saw in that little diagram so the original would hit a little bit higher than this I wanted it a little bit lower knowing from my previous one that I would have liked it a tad lower so second time around I did make the neckline like I wanted I'll close up so you can see that binding super interesting I was conflicted as to what to use for the binding I didn't want another light color that was at the same tone of off-white so those selvages were perfect, it's super clean. I've sewn it from the inside and flipped it to the outside and then just top stitched along the edge with that shallow zigzag stitch. And this stretches also, so this binding I did cut it at 85% of the total neck circumference. And it works really well, it's nice and flat against my skin. And it's the same color and the same, the same type of, well, it is the same fabric. So I think it looks really nice. I love how that looked because it's selvage. This doesn't fray, well, lace doesn't fray, but it's a nice finished edge right there. So I really like how that looks. Here's a close up of the sleeve. This is a short sleeve. And when you don't have to hem, it's always a win. It just looks super pretty, super delicate when it's got those scallops. 
and you just need to be really careful to trim them out really nice and slowly so you don't like miss any of the little shapes because these scallops have scallops as you can see so they they take a while to trim it and to make it look nice looks like that on the back there you can see the raglan seam i super love this lace raglan top why not <laughs> I then got to work with my cotton lycra version. I always had this sneaky suspicion because this fabric was structured that it was gonna look wide and boxy on me. But I went ahead and did what I had planned first without worrying about that initially. And I wanted to really highlight the fact that these are raglan seams. So with this one, you can surely tell the seams right there because I have a lace and I have a solid right here. With the fully laced version, you can't tell that much, but that's okay. But with this one, with all the print going on, there was no way those seams were gonna be seen. And I guess from far away, it would just look like any regular t-shirt with a normal sleeve. So I decided to make some fake piping. I had scraps of red rayon spandex, same tone of red in the print. I made sure that the fabric I was using for the fake piping was also a lighter weight so that it wouldn't create bulk there. And you know, I just cut strips that are one and a quarter inch tall, length, any length that will fit this seam right there. Um, and it's the same sort of measurements I've used to do fake piping in the past. For knits, it works. So I just fold those long strips of piping in half lengthwise, sandwich that in between the two seams. I just works calmly, put it on my lap, start doing that with this one i didn't need to hand baste because the fabrics weren't sliding they were actually sticking onto each other very easy to work with fabrics i was just able to put that in between pin away and then i went to the serger surged all that making sure not to trim away seam allowance and then i went with my sewing machine and sewed the zigzag stitch as usual at three eighths and that will be the fake piping there. So I really like how that turned out. It does really highlight the seams. Now, I always, always knew I wanted to do a V-neckline. I love V-necklines. This pattern doesn't come with that option. It has a scoop. And I have used the neckband piece of the classic tee in the past. I really like the width of that neckband, how it's designed to be the finished width. It's already including the 3-8 seam allowance. So I showed you at the start that I had dropped the neckline from the original scoop by two inches and then drew from there my soft V. So I had to measure the finished circumference of this new neckline. I was always willing to adapt the length of that neckband piece from the classic T to fit this one at the same 85%, so 15% smaller. Have a look at how I did this. This is how the V neckline looks, all raw. The sleeves are on. I've put my fake piping there, everything's ready. So I'm just gonna fold this onto itself to have these centers of the shirts like that in that shape so I can measure the length. Okay, so I folded the neckline. This is the center back, that is the center front, the center of the V. I've basically got the neckline extended like that and I'm gonna measure, but I'm not gonna measure from the edge of the fabric. That would be a measurement that is not correct. I will measure within at 3 eighths of an inch inside because that is where I'm going to sew. So that is the measurement that I want. If you measure from the raw edge, you will get a smaller measurement. And when you calculate your percentage from a smaller measurement, you'll get a shorter band and then you'll get puckers. It will just end up being too small. So I'm measuring, walking my tape along three eighths of an inch in, up to the very end here, to the fold. In centimeters, that's 37 and a half in inches it's 14 and three quarters okay so the measurement was 14 and three quarters this is in inches i'm going to multiply that by two because that was only half of the neckline there that's the total circumference of my neckline at the stitch line at three eighths of an inch in from the raw edge now what my band at 85 percent so multiply times 85 and my band will need to be 25 inches long. In metric that was 37 and a half centimeters times 2, 75 centimeters, multiply that by 0.85 
and my band needs to be 63 and 3 quarters long in metric. I have a v-neck band of the classic T and I have it across the fabric. The fabric is folded so there's a fold there and you can see here it says greatest stretch so the stretch of the fabric is going horizontally and the grain is going vertically and that is how our neck band should be cut. Remember I mentioned my neck band had to be 25 inches long. Well 25 inches if you don't want to do maths you can always just put the tape there and then see what the half of that is and it's 12 and a half inches so I need from the fold to the tip of that seam line because that's going to be my seam allowance there I'm counting up to there needs to measure 12 and a half inches and it actually does measure 12 and a half inches if I measure it's exactly 12 and a half inches so basically this neck band that is for the classic tee will work for the adaptation I made to the Rockford Ranklan where I dropped it by two inches. So at least for this size, for size large, because this is a neck band for size large, the same neck band piece will work if you drop your neckline of the Rockford Raglan by two inches. Have a go, measure. If not, if this was a little bit long or a little bit short, I would just fold away here or do any sort of change on this area. But always making sure that from the fold of the fabric to the stitching line there, I have the amount that I need, which in this case was 12 and a half inches. And because it's on the fold, it'll end up being 25 inches. So that is how the V neckline turned out. Super nice, super crisp there. I really enjoy sewing the neck bands it's super neat the neck band does catch that area that has the fake piping it is a little bit bulky there but not terribly so on the inside all the edges have been surged this point there is super neat on the inside and that's where you see where i clipped into there now i didn't film how to sew a v neck band because i already have a full step by step on the video I made about the Laundry Day Tea, which is a free pattern from Love Notions that you can get by joining the Facebook group and getting the code there. So that's why I'm not filming this over and over again because I've already filmed it and that is exactly how I sew all my V neck bands. And they always turn out super nice on the V and super nice. It does have a few steps the way I do it, extra steps with some hand basting in there but super worth it to get a really nice V that doesn't have pockets or is not off center, you know? This is my cotton Lycra one or cotton spandex. It's very boxy and structured, it doesn't drape. So I did shorten it because I thought it was just too long to have that structure. Took two inches off the bottom of the hem <laughs> and then I brought it in at the sides from the waist in a little bit. I brought it in so it's more straight boxy and not swing style. But I love how it turned out now, it's at the high hip. Here you can see where I did shape it a little bit from the waist like that, but it was actually wider in the original version. And I think if you're working with drapey and knits, it's perfectly fine. It is only a light to medium weight cotton lycra, but it, it doesn't drape, it's nice and structured. So I thought having it a little bit closer to the body, a little bit shorter would be better. I did do an inch hem allowance, pressed it up and twin needled that. This is the feet up on the top, raglan sleeves and I really wanted to make sure that you can see that they're raglan sleeves and that's why I did the little tiny piping there. Just a scrap of red rayon spandex that is in the same tone as the red in the print there so I was making sure that that would match. And the sleeve, I did lengthen the sleeve hem by an inch and then I did an, uh, an inch hem allowance. Um, I just wanted it a tad longer and I had enough fabric for it so I did that. Here you can see the lovely V neckline, it's not deep, you know, it's just the right depth I think for me, for what I like. Nice and flat against the body and the V in there is really nice and crisp. I really loved doing this, <laughs> it was so nice and I love having a rag line with a V and it's not one of the original options but it can totally be done. There you can see the shape of this raglan sleeve, it is slightly curved and that's why it fits so well. There's no bunching or like excess fabric underneath here or there. I don't have pleats above the bust. I think it's a really good fit for my body. This is the standard bust. There you can see the fake piping highlighting that beautiful seam there. 
both sides. I really like that. Really enjoyed making this, giving it little touches, adapting to the fabric for the feet, just taking it in at the sides. Make sure you do adapt the fit to your fabric and you can only do that by trying things on. I had already sewn my side seams, serged them and I knew that I had to check before I actually did the hem so I just quickly tried it on and thought yeah it's a little bit too wide. It's not that it's a problem about being wide it's just that this fabric doesn't drape so it was just sticking out so I brought it in, made it shorter and now it's exactly like I like it for this type of fabric. Love the V love it i think this pattern has a lot of possibilities down the road for me i always think these styles are so easy to sew so few seams, there's no issues of um, pattern pieces that you have to ease into others. You know, you just follow the notches, single notches here to the sleeve. This whole seam is one continuous seam. It is so easy to do. And you don't need to worry about the shoulders fitting you. Like you have to do with styles that actually have a seam up to the shoulder. You know, if you need a wider shoulder adjustment or a narrow shoulder adjustment, those things aren't really that noticeable with these styles. So you can sort of forget about that and it's less guesswork. So I really, really enjoy these. Raglan sleeves are always very nice in my opinion. And there's also options for color blocking. I didn't really do that in this opportunity. You can use up little bits that you have left over for sleeves and things like that. And you can have a lot of fun with patterns like this. The Rockford Raglan isn't the only pattern that is $5 today. Also included in the sale are the kids versions. There is a super cute one for boys called Samson Sweater that also has raglan sleeves. And for the girls, there's the Wrigley Raglan. These three raglan sleeve patterns, Rockford, Samson and Wrigley, they're all $5 today, only today, Friday. If what I saw inspires you, you are welcome to use my affiliate link to get any of these patterns that are on sale. I do make a small commission from every sale and that helps support me in what I do in this channel. So thank you in advance if you use my affiliate link. For sure, I will be revisiting this pattern again. I have plans to turn this into a dress version somehow because I love the fit on here. I think I can slim down um, this to turn it into a bodice as such and then add a skirt. So I'm excited about that possibility. Uh, you'll probably see it soon pretty soon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying your sewing as much as I am and I'll see you again very soon with another creative video. Bye!